Hello. These stories will help you relax and sleep. I have added rain sounds in the background. Sleep well. The town of Ravenswood lay nestled amidst the whispering pines, a place where time seemed to move differently, where the past cast long shadows over the present. It was a town steeped in secrets, where every cobblestone street whispered tales of tragedy and mystery. And on this fateful night, another chapter in Ravenswood's dark history was about to unfold. Detective Elena Monroe arrived in Ravenswood just as dusk began to fall, the fading light casting an eerie glow over the quaint buildings and winding streets. As she stepped out of her car, she felt a chill run down her spine, a premonition of the darkness that lurked beneath the town's picturesque facade. The first thing Elena noticed was the silence a heavy blanket of stillness that hung over the town like a shroud. There were no sounds of laughter or chatter, no sign of life stirring in the fading light. It was as if the town itself held its breath, waiting for something to break the oppressive silence. Elena made her way towards the crime scene, her footsteps echoing against the cobblestones like a drumbeat in the night. The air was thick with anticipation, a palpable sense of unease that clung to her skin like a second shadow. As she rounded the corner, the scene unfolded before her like a macabre tableau. The body lay sprawled on the ground, bathed in the sickly glow of the streetlights. Blood pooled around it, staining the cobblestones crimson, a stark contrast to the pristine white of the surrounding buildings. Elena approached the scene with a sense of grim determination her eyes scanning the area for clues. The victim's eyes stared lifelessly into the night sky, a silent witness to the horrors that had befallen them. It was a sight that would haunt Elena's dreams for years to come, a reminder of the darkness that lurked just beneath the surface of everyday life. As she examined the scene, Elena's mind raced with questions. Who was the victim? What had led them to this grisly fate? and perhaps most importantly, who was responsible for this heinous act. But amidst the chaos and confusion, one thing was clear. Ravenswood held secrets far darker than anyone could imagine, secrets that would soon come to light in the most horrifying of ways. And so, as Elena Monroe stood amidst the shadows of Ravenswood, she knew that her journey into the heart of darkness was only just beginning. And little did she know, the horrors that awaited her would test her resolve like never before, plunging her into a nightmare from which there may be no escape. The morning sun cast its feeble light over Ravenswood, illuminating the town's twisted alleys and fog-laden streets with a cold, pale glow. Detective Elena Monroe stepped out of her car once again, the events of the previous night still fresh in her mind. She couldn't shake the feeling of unease that had settled over her like a suffocating cloak. Nor could she ignore the creeping sense of dread that seemed to seep from every cobblestone. As she approached the crime scene, Elena's eyes were drawn once again to the body lying at her feet, a grim reminder of the horrors that lurked in the shadows of Ravenswood. The victim's face was twisted in a grotesque mask of pain and terror, their lifeless eyes staring blankly into the distance. It was a sight that sent a shiver down Elena's spine a silent testament to the brutality of the crime that had been committed. But even as she surveyed the scene, Elena's mind was already racing, piecing together fragments of information in search of a lead. She knew that to solve this case, she would need to delve deeper into the dark underbelly of Ravenswood to uncover the secrets that lay hidden beneath its picturesque facade. Her first stop was the town square, where she hoped to find witnesses who could shed light on the events of the previous night. But as she questioned the residents, she was met with silence and evasion, each one more reluctant to speak than the last. It was as if they were afraid, afraid of what might happen if they dared to speak the truth. Undeterred, Elena pressed on, determined to leave no stone unturned in her search for answers. She combed through the victim's belongings, searching for anything that might provide a clue to their identity or their killer. But the more she searched, the more elusive the truth became, slipping through her fingers like smoke on the wind. 
It was only when she stumbled upon a series of paintings hidden away in the victim's attic that the pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place. The paintings were dark and twisted, each one a haunting masterpiece of horror and despair. And as Elena studied them, she realized with a sinking feeling in the pit of her stomach that they bore a striking resemblance to the scenes of the murders. Gabriel Blackwood. The name echoed in Elena's mind like a curse. A name whispered in hushed tones by the townsfolk. A name synonymous with darkness and death. She knew then that she would need to pay a visit to the reclusive artist, to confront him about his macabre creations and their chilling resemblance to the crimes that had brought her to Ravenswood. But as she made her way to Blackwood's secluded mansion on the outskirts of town, a sense of foreboding washed over her like a tidal wave. She knew that whatever awaited her within those walls, it would be unlike anything she had ever encountered before. And little did she know, the horrors that awaited her would test her courage and resolve in ways she could never have imagined. The path to Gabriel Blackwood's mansion wound its way through the dense forest surrounding Ravenswood, the ancient trees whispering secrets to the wind as Detective Elena Monroe made her way deeper into the heart of darkness. The air was heavy with the scent of pine and decay, a tangible reminder of the secrets that lurked within the shadows. As the mansion loomed into view, Elena couldn't help but feel a chill run down her spine. The building stood like a sentinel against the encroaching darkness, its ivy-covered walls seeming to pulse with a life of their own. It was a sight straight out of a nightmare, a stark contrast to the quaint charm of the town that lay beyond. With each step she took, Elena felt the weight of the unknown pressing down upon her, a sense of impending doom that hung in the air like a shroud. But despite her trepidation, she pressed on, determined to uncover the truth that lay hidden within the mansion's walls. The door creaked open with a sound like the wail of a banshee, revealing a dimly lit hallway that stretched out before her like a yawning abyss. Elena hesitated for only a moment before stepping inside, the darkness swallowing her whole as she ventured deeper into the unknown. The interior of the mansion was a maze of winding corridors and shadowy alcoves, each one more ominous than the last. Paintings adorned the walls, their twisted images leering down at Elena with malevolent intent. It was as if the very walls themselves were alive, watching her every move with cold, unblinking eyes. But as she explored further, Elena couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched, that unseen eyes followed her every step. It was a sensation that sent a shiver down her spine, a silent warning that she was not alone in the darkness. Finally, she reached the heart of the mansion, a grand chamber bathed in the sickly glow of candlelight. And there, seated at an ornate desk in the center of the room, was Gabriel Blackwood himself, the man whose name had haunted her thoughts since the moment she'd had arrived in Ravenswood. Their eyes met across the room, and for a moment, time seemed to stand still. Elena felt as if she were staring into the abyss itself, into the depths of darkness that lurked within Gabriel's soul. But she refused to back down, refused to let fear cloud her judgment, as she prepared to confront the man at the center of the nightmare that had consumed Ravenswood. And little did she know, the horrors that awaited her were far worse than anything she could have ever imagined. The air in Gabriel Blackwood's mansion was thick with tension, every shadow seeming to writhe with unseen malevolence as Detective Elena Monroe faced off against the enigmatic artist. Gabriel's gaze bore into her with an intensity that sent a shiver down her spine his eyes betraying nothing of the darkness that lay hidden behind them. You're not welcome here, detective. Gabriel's voice was smooth as silk, each word dripping with disdain. What brings you to my doorstep in the dead of night? Elena squared her shoulders, refusing to be intimidated by the man who sat before her. I'm here about the murders, she said, her voice steady despite the unease that gnawed at her insides. Your paintings bear a striking resemblance to the scenes of the crimes. Care to explain? Gabriel's lips curled into a sardonic smile, his eyes gleaming with a twisted amusement. 
Ah, so you've come to accuse me then, he said, his tone mocking. Tell me, detective, do you truly believe that I am capable of such heinous acts? Elena held his gaze, her jaw clenched with determination. I believe in following the evidence, she said, her voice firm, and right now the evidence points to you. But Gabriel only laughed, the sound echoing off the walls of the mansion like the tolling of a funeral bell. You know nothing, detective, he said, his voice low and menacing. You think you can come into my home and accuse me of murder? You're playing with fire, Elena Monroe. And trust me when I say you do not want to get burned. Elena felt a chill run down her spine at his words, a sense of unease settling over her like a suffocating cloak. But she refused to back down refused to let fear cloud her judgment as she prepared to face off against the man who held the key to unlocking the secrets of Ravenswood. As the tension between them reached its breaking point, Elena knew that she was standing on the precipice of something far darker than anything she had ever encountered before. And little did she know, the true horrors of Ravenswood were yet to reveal themselves, lurking in the shadows like a predator waiting to strike. The air in Gabriel Blackwood's mansion was thick with tension, every shadow seeming to writhe with unseen malevolence as Detective Elena Monroe faced off against the enigmatic artist. Gabriel's gaze bore into her with an intensity that sent a shiver down her spine, his eyes betraying nothing of the darkness that lay hidden behind them. You're not welcome here, Detective. Gabriel's voice was smooth as silk each word dripping with disdain. What brings you to my doorstep in the dead of night? Elena squared her shoulders, refusing to be intimidated by the man who sat before her. I'm here about the murders, she said, her voice steady despite the unease that gnawed at her insides. Your paintings bear a striking resemblance to the scenes of the crimes. Care to explain? Gabriel's lips curled into a sardonic smile his eyes gleaming with a twisted amusement. Ah, so you come to accuse me then, he said, his tone mocking. Tell me, detective, do you truly believe that I am capable of such heinous acts? Elena held his gaze, her jaw clenched with determination. I believe in following the evidence, she said, her voice firm, and right now the evidence points to you. But Gabriel only laughed the sound echoing off the walls of the mansion like the tolling of a funeral bell. You know nothing, detective, he said, his voice low and menacing. You think you can come into my home and accuse me of murder? You're playing with fire, Elena Monroe. And trust me when I say, you do not want to get burned. Elena felt a chill run down her spine at his words, a sense of unease settling over her like a suffocating cloak. But she refused to back down, refused to let fear cloud her judgment as she prepared to face off against the man who held the key to unlocking the secrets of Ravenswood. As the tension between them reached its breaking point, Elena knew that she was standing on the precipice of something far darker than anything she had ever encountered before. And little did she know, the true horrors of Ravenswood were yet to reveal themselves, lurking in the shadows like a predator waiting to strike. The night descended upon Ravenswood like a shroud, enveloping the town in darkness as Detective Elena Monroe stood on the threshold of destiny. With each passing moment, the weight of the past bore down upon her like a leaden sky, threatening to crush her beneath its relentless weight. But she refused to yield, refused to let fear dictate her actions as she prepared to confront the darkness that had haunted her for so long. As Elena made her way through the twisting streets of Ravenswood, a sense of foreboding settled over her like a second skin. She knew that the time for reckoning had come, that the final showdown was fast approaching. And as she neared Gabriel Blackwood's mansion, she felt a chill run down her spine, a silent warning that the horrors that awaited her within its walls would test her resolve like never before. The mansion loomed before her like a specter from a nightmare its ivy-covered walls seeming to pulse with a life of their own. But Elena pushed aside her fear, steeling herself for the confrontation that lay ahead. 
With each step she took, the darkness seemed to close in around her, threatening to swallow her whole. As she entered the mansion, a sense of deja vu washed over her like a wave crashing against the shore. The grand chamber lay before her, bathed in the sickly glow of candlelight, and there, seated at an ornate desk in the center of the room, was Gabriel Blackwood himself. Their eyes met across the room, and for a moment, time seemed to stand still. Elena felt as if she were staring into the abyss itself, into the depths of darkness that lurked within Gabriel's soul. But she refused to back down, refused to let fear cloud her judgment as she prepared to confront the man at the center of the nightmare that had consumed Ravenswood. With each passing moment, the tension in the room grew thicker, suffocating in its intensity. Elena could feel the weight of Gabriel's gaze upon her, a silent challenge that dared her to delve deeper into the darkness that lay within his soul. And as she squared her shoulders and prepared to speak, she knew that the battle for Ravenswood's soul had only just begun. But little did she know, the horrors that awaited her were far worse than anything she could have ever imagined. And as the final showdown unfolded, she would be forced to confront the darkness within herself, to make a choice that would determine the fate of Ravenswood and all who dwelled within its haunted walls. As the first light of dawn broke over the horizon, casting its golden rays across the sleepy town of Ravenswood, Detective Elena Monroe emerged from the darkness with a sense of weary triumph. The events of the past few days had tested her courage and resolve in ways she could never have imagined. But now, as she stood amidst the ruins of Gabriel Blackwood's mansion, she knew that the nightmare was finally over. The mansion lay in ruins around her, a shattered monument to the darkness that had consumed it. The grand chamber, once bathed in the sickly glow of candlelight, now lay empty and silent its walls echoing with the ghostly whispers of the past. And there, amidst the debris and destruction, Elena found Gabriel Blackwood, his eyes wide with shock and disbelief as he stared at the wreckage of his life's work. Their confrontation had been fierce and brutal, a battle of wills that had stretched into the night. But in the end, it was Gabriel who had blinked first, his twisted ambitions crumbling beneath the weight of his own madness. And as Elena looked into his eyes, she saw not a monster, but a broken man, a victim of his own dark desires. But even as Gabriel lay defeated at her feet, Elena knew that the true battle had only just begun. The town of Ravenswood was still reeling from the horrors that had befallen it, and it would take more than the capture of one man to heal the wounds that had been inflicted upon its soul. And so, with a heavy heart and a weary sigh, Elena set out to rebuild what had been lost, to uncover the truth buried beneath the layers of deception and despair. It would be a long and arduous journey, she knew, but one that she was determined to see through to the end. As she drove away from Ravenswood, the town faded into the distance behind her, its haunted streets disappearing into the mist like a dream. But even as she left it behind, Elena knew that its secrets would always linger in the shadows, waiting to be uncovered by those brave enough to seek the truth. And so, as the sun rose high in the sky, casting its warm embrace over the town of Ravenswood, Detective Elena Monroe drove on into the unknown, her heart heavy with the weight of the past, but her spirit buoyed by the promise of a brighter tomorrow. For in the end, she knew, the shadows may fade, but the light would always prevail. And as long as there were those willing to fight for justice, the darkness would never truly triumph. The sun dipped low on the horizon, casting long shadows that stretched like fingers across the cobblestone streets of the French Quarter. Detective Michael Blackwood navigated the labyrinthine alleyways with the ease of a man who knew them intimately, his footsteps echoing softly in the stillness of the evening. As he rounded a corner, he caught sight of the crime scene ahead, illuminated by the flickering glow of gas lamps. Yellow police tape fluttered in the breeze, marking off the perimeter like a silent sentinel guarding a forbidden secret. Michael's heart quickened as he approached, a sense of foreboding settling over him like a shroud. The body lay sprawled on the ground, 
pale and lifeless against the backdrop of crumbling brick walls and tangled vines. The woman's eyes were open wide, frozen in a silent scream that echoed through the night. Strange symbols were etched into her flesh, dark lines that seemed to pulse with an otherworldly energy. Offerings of blood, red roses, and black candles surrounded her, casting eerie shadows that danced across the ground. Michael knelt beside the body, his breath catching in his throat as he took in the scene before him. This was no ordinary murder, of that he was certain. The precision of the cuts, the ritualistic nature of the symbols, it all pointed to something far more sinister than a simple act of violence. As he surveyed the scene, Michael's mind raced with questions. Who was this woman? And what had led her to this gruesome fate? What dark forces had been unleashed in the heart of his city? And how many more would fall victim before he could stop them? With a heavy heart, Michael rose to his feet, steeling himself for the task ahead. He had faced many horrors in his years as a detective, but none quite like this. As he turned to leave, a chill wind whispered through the alley, carrying with it the echoes of a name long forgotten, Madame Eloise Laveau. And in that moment, Michael knew that his journey into the heart of darkness had only just begun. The scent of jasmine hung heavy in the air as Detective Michael Blackwood made his way through the winding streets of the French Quarter. The memory of the previous night's grisly discovery weighed heavily on his mind each step a reminder of the darkness that lurked just beneath the surface of his beloved city. With each passing moment, Michael felt the tendrils of unease creeping ever closer, wrapping around him like a suffocating embrace. He knew that he was treading dangerous ground, but he was driven by a relentless need for answers, no matter the cost. As he reached the door of Marie Laveau's shop, Michael hesitated for just a moment before stealing himself and stepping inside. The interior was dimly lit, the flickering glow of candles casting strange shadows on the walls. The air was thick with the smell of incense, and the sound of distant drums echoed in the background, setting the stage for the mystical encounter that was about to unfold. Marie Laveau herself sat at a small table in the center of the room, her face obscured by the shadows as she studied a deck of tarot cards with a practiced eye. She looked up as Michael entered, her gaze piercing and inscrutable. Detective Blackwood, she greeted him, her voice low and melodious. Michael hesitated for a moment, unsure of how much to reveal, but he could sense that Marie Laveau was no ordinary woman and that she held the key to unlocking the secrets that lay hidden beneath the surface of the city. I need your help, he said finally, his voice barely more than a whisper. There's been another murder, a ritualistic killing, just like the one last night. I need to know what's going on, and I need to know how to stop it. Marie Laveau regarded him for a long moment, her expression unreadable. Then, with a slow and deliberate movement, she reached out and beckoned for him to sit. You seek answers in the darkness, detective, she said, her voice carrying a note of warning. But be careful what you wish for. The path you tread is fraught with danger, and the forces you seek to harness are not easily controlled. But Michael was undeterred. He had come too far to turn back now, and he would not rest until he had uncovered the truth, no matter the cost. With a sense of determination burning in his chest, he leaned forward and prepared to delve deeper into the mysteries that lay hidden beneath the surface of the city he called home. And as he did, he knew that he was about to embark on a journey unlike any he had ever known, one that would test his courage, his convictions, and his very soul. The flickering light of the gas lamps cast long shadows across the cluttered table where Detective Michael Blackwood and Marie Laveau sat their faces illuminated by the glow of candles that danced in the darkness. The air was thick with the scent of incense, and the rhythmic beat of drums echoed in the distance, lending an air of mysticism to the scene. Marie Laveau's dark eyes glittered in the dim light as she regarded Michael with a mixture of curiosity and concern. 
she knew that the path he'd chosen was a dangerous one, fraught with peril and uncertainty, but she also sensed a determination in him that could not be denied. You seek the truth, detective, she said, her voice soft but firm. But the truth comes at a price. Are you prepared to pay it? Michael hesitated for just a moment, his mind racing with thoughts of the horrors he had witnessed and the dangers that lay ahead. But then he squared his shoulders and met Marie Laveau's gaze head on. I'll do whatever it takes, he said, his voice steady and resolute. I need to know what's going on, and I need to stop it before more innocent lives are lost. Marie Laveau nodded, a knowing smile playing at the corners of her lips. She reached out and placed a weathered hand on Michael's, her touch surprisingly warm against his skin. Very well, detective, she said, but know this. The path you are about to walk is a treacherous one, and the dangers you will face are unlike anything you have ever known. But if you are truly determined to seek the truth, then I will help you in any way I can. With that, Marie Laveau rose from her seat and disappeared into the shadows, leaving Michael alone with his thoughts. He knew that he was about to embark on a journey that would test him in ways he could never have imagined. But he also knew that he could not turn back now. As he prepared to follow Marie Laveau into the unknown, he felt a sense of anticipation building in the pit of his stomach. He knew that the road ahead would be long and perilous, but he also knew that he was ready to face whatever challenges lay in his path. With a sense of determination burning in his chest, Michael set off into the night, his mind focused on the task ahead and the mysteries that awaited him in the darkness. And as he disappeared into the shadows, he knew that he was about to uncover secrets that would change the course of his life forever. The moon hung low in the sky, casting a silvery glow over the city as Detective Michael Blackwood made his way through the deserted streets of the French Quarter. The air was heavy with the scent of jasmine and magnolia, and the sound of distant drums echoed in the distance, lending an air of unease to the night. As Michael walked, his mind was consumed by thoughts of the case, the ritualistic murders, the dark forces at play, and the enigmatic figure of Madame Eloise Laveau looming ever larger in his thoughts. He knew that he was getting closer to the truth, but with each step forward, he felt the weight of his past bearing down on him like a millstone around his neck. Memories flashed before his eyes. Memories of another time, another place, another life. Memories of a sister lost, a family torn apart, and a promise left unfulfilled. The pain of those memories cut deep like a knife to the heart. But Michael knew that he could not let them distract him from the task at hand. With a sense of determination burning in his chest, Michael pressed on, his footsteps echoing in the silence of the night. He knew that he was on the right track, that he was getting closer to the truth with each passing moment. But he also knew that the road ahead would be fraught with danger, and that he would need to draw on every ounce of courage and strength he possessed if he was to emerge victorious. As he rounded a corner, Michael caught sight of a figure standing in the shadows, watching him with dark, inscrutable eyes. It was Madame Laveau, her presence a silent reminder of the dangers that lurked around every corner. You're getting closer, detective, she said, her voice like velvet in the darkness. But be careful. The forces you're dealing with are beyond your comprehension, and they will stop at nothing to protect their secrets. Michael nodded, his jaw clenched with determination. He knew that Madame Laveau was right, that the road ahead would be fraught with peril and uncertainty, but he also knew that he could not turn back now, that he had come too far to let fear or doubt hold him back. With a silent vow to see the case through to the end, Michael turned and disappeared into the night, his mind focused on the task ahead and the mysteries that awaited him in the darkness. And as he walked, he knew that he was drawing ever closer to the truth and to the final confrontation that awaited him at the end of the road. The night hung heavy over the city, the air thick with tension as Detective Michael Blackwood stood on the rain, 
soaked streets of the French Quarter. The sound of thunder rumbled in the distance, a fitting backdrop to the impending showdown that awaited him. In the distance, the silhouette of Madame Eloise Laveau loomed like a specter, her dark form illuminated by the flickering glow of the gas lamps. Her eyes gleamed with a malevolent light as she watched Michael approach, a predatory smile playing at the corners of her lips. So we meet again, detective, she said, her voice dripping with venom. I must admit, I didn't think you had it in you to come this far. Michael said nothing, his gaze fixed on Madame Laveau with a steely determination. He knew that this was it, the final confrontation that would determine the fate of the city and all who dwelled within it. Without a word, Madame Laveau raised her hand, and from the darkness emerged her sinister minions, their eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. Michael tensed, his muscles coiled like a spring as he prepared to face whatever horrors lay in his path. But then, from the depths of his soul, he felt a surge of power unlike anything he had ever known. It was as if the very essence of the city itself was flowing through him, filling him with a strength and resolve he had never thought possible. With a primal roar, Michael charged forward, his fists clenched and his heart pounding in his chest. The minions of Madame Laveau lunged at him with clawed hands and bared teeth, but he fought them off with a ferocity born of desperation and determination. And then, finally, he stood face to face with Madame Laveau herself, their eyes locking in a silent battle of wills. For a moment, the world seemed to hold its breath, the tension between them crackling in the air like electricity. But then, with a swift motion, Michael lunged forward, his hand closing around the artifact that Madame Laveau held clutched in her grasp. With a triumphant cry, he wrenched it free, feeling its power course through him like a bolt of lightning. And in that moment, the darkness that had threatened to consume the city was banished, vanquished by the light of truth and justice. Madame Laveau and her minions disappeared into the shadows, defeated but not destroyed, leaving Michael standing alone in the rain. Soaked streets, his heart pounding with a sense of victory, unlike any he had ever known. As he looked out over the city, bathed in the soft glow of dawn, Michael knew that his journey was far from over. But for now at least, the shadows that had haunted him for so long had been banished, replaced by the promise of a new beginning and a brighter future for all who called New Orleans home.